Zoom. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to be with you, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you bless each and every person that gives, Father, that they give, Lord, and you give in return, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we plant seed into the kingdom of God, Lord God, that we, re we reap a harvest in this place in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I stand before your people, Father, and your holy desk, Father, to give your word unto your people. And he that has an ear to hear, let him say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. The title of this message here this morning, I have one, message, one announcement before I get into that. Uh, in April, we have a Feed the Multitudes uh, Refuge Church is going to be putting on a Feed the Multitudes, and they're trying to get all the churches, you know, as many churches as they can, involved in this thing. Feeding the multitudes, feeding the homeless, feeding this, feeding that. There's going to be baskets there so they can drop their drugs in it. I, now, I'm going to want you to know something. It's going to take God, a lot of God, for somebody to drop some drugs in a basket. Mm -hmm. But I know a God that can do it. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. They're going to have... Uh, baskets there, drop the drugs, drop the needles, get right with God. It's a chance for somebody to get saved. It may be a chance for you as children of God to be able to go in and be able to minister to somebody. Amen. Amen. We want that's that's the whole idea in the kingdom of God is to getting people into the kingdom of God. Right? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. The title of this message here this, here this morning is Travailing in Zion. Travailing in Zion. Praise the Lord. You've heard me preach of the message, Groans of Existence. This would probably be, I would have to say that the part two of that message from a long time ago, but it's also, there's something to it. There's something to it, and the Lord wouldn't put it on my heart. Amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah 66. When you get there, say Amen. Isaiah 66. Amen. We're going to begin with verse number 8. Well, let's, let's start out with verse number 5. It said, Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble his, at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. <coughs> a voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith God. Of a birth so sudden, this says, who, who should, who hath heard such a thing? Usually in childbirth there are the pains, and women know the pains that they're going through. Without that epidural, there's a lot of pain in childbirth. I don't know. I've seen it. It wasn't very fun. I even was in pain. When Jack, when JC was born, I mm -hmm. hurt. You keep that in mind that when you get close to someone, when they're in pain, you should be in pain. All right. But the earth brings forth its productions gradually and slowly. Nations rise by degrees and are long in coming to maturity. But here is such an event as if the earth should in one day be covered. With a luxurious vegetation, or as if a nation should spring at once into beginning. The increase in the church would be a great and wonderful, as if these changes were to occur in a moment's time. Anything in this life, if it's any good at all, will take time. Yes, sir. As I quoted the scripture this morning, he said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall run and not be weary, so they shall walk and not faint. Why would the Lord tell you that if you'll wait, you won't have to run? And not only will you won't have to run, but you won't grow, get weary. 
And if you walk, you won't get faint. And if you get faint, you won't have to worry because I'm already there. Why would the Lord say all these things? Why would the Lord tell you? He said, just wait. Just wait upon the Lord. Just wait for the harvest. There's this time to plant and a time to a time to, to cultivate and a time to get the ground ready and there's a time to put it in, put the seed in. We've been putting the seed in for years. We've been putting the seed in for decades, ever since Jesus went to the cross. Amen. Paul started out putting seeds in, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They started putting the seeds into the ground, and they're yet there's coming forth a harvest, and Jesus is coming. Yeah. And in his coming, he said, I come in like no manner like you've ever seen before. And I come for my children. Who should think of such a thing, but yet good things don't come unless there be some sort of pain involved. Good things don't come unless there be some sort of pain that, that causes agony and almost makes you want to quit. All right. Amen. Come on. Good things come to those that wait yeah. upon the Lord. Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? That is to produce its grass and flowers and fruits and trees. If these trees out here were to just bloom in one day and then one day they don't bloom and we have winter, what kind of season would that be? What kind of season would it be if we just said, okay, you've got one day to get everybody saved that you can possibly get saved in 24 hours? Amen. Come on. Missing day. How many of you would scramble to up off of your feet and do something about it or would you go and try to keep your own lamp trimmed? The Lord's coming. And it's, and, and it's just as if you've got 24 hours to get things ready. You've got 24 hours. You, you've got two choices. You can either get yourself ready or you can help get somebody else ready. All right. It's that day and it's that hour and it's that close. Mm -hmm. It usually requires much longer time for it to mature in productions. The germ does not start forth at once. The flower, the fruit, the yellow harvest, and the lofty trees are not produced in a moment. Months and years are required before the earth would be covered with its luxurious and beautiful productions. Nothing good comes that there's not some pain. When a seed is put into the ground, it must forth break the shell. Yep. And breaking of that shell and that seed, if you could be that seed and feel that pain, that seed, that seed, when it breaks forth, that shell is crying out unto, I need some help. There's people that's outside this door that's crying out and saying, <laughs> I need some help. But yet he's calling out to his church those that are tuned in the Spirit of God, travailing in Zion. Where is the travailing in Zion? There isn't any travailing in Zion anymore. There's no murmurings. There, all there is is murmurings of bad things and no groans of existence. We groan because we want to go home. I've cried every day. I've cried time and time and time again. God, just take me home. I can't take it anymore. I can't do it without you, God. But he said there's got to be some travailing in the kingdom of God. There's got to be some Amen. travailing in the body of Christ. Amen. Right. There's got to be some travailing. As a woman having a child, there will be no birth if there is no travailing. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. Because somebody's got to bring forth some pain in order to get some gain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No pain, no gain. Right. And put out some in. Come on. Our heart's cry needs to be, God, set some travail on me. Amen. Our heart's cry needs to be, I need to get help, get the body of Christ, all of Zion travailing. There's not enough going on. We've got, and, and I've made mention of it. We've got programs. We've got this. We've got this for the kids. We've got that for the youth. We've got this. We've got that. We've separated everything. Our church is better than yours. This is better than that. And right now they're starting to start starting to rock upon the in, in the government. The separation of church and state. We ought to be travailing in the kingdom of God. Amen. We're not travailing in the kingdom of God and we're not seeing what's happening that when the church separates from state, I'm going to tell you what, the body of Christ is in a heap world of hurt right. and Amen. trouble. Amen. All right. Because the things that you got will no longer exist. Freak. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because then there comes that day it's very soon to come upon you they're going to ask you to put all the Bibles in a pile. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And when they put all the Bibles into the pile, they're going to spread gas over them. And next thing you know, they're going to light the biggest match that they got and throw it up on them. You better have the word on the inside of your heart. You better have some travailing on the kingdom of God because yeah. God's calling out to his people. He said, travail in the spirit. Travail. I'm calling out to Mount Zion. Yeah. Travailing in the spirit. I'm calling for you. It's going to take some travail in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Or shall a nation be born at once? If a nation is born at once, if a kingdom is born at once, what happens to that kingdom or that nation? That nation or kingdom becomes, and I use this word lightly, retarded. Come on. There's no govern. There's no specific ways to do things. They've been born. Here we are. Such an event never has occurred. A nation is brought into existence by degrees. A man of God is never brought up instantly. He's done by degrees. Amen. Come on. When you're raised in the ministry, it doesn't give you every right to be the ministry. You can't be the ministry. You're not a one-man army. It takes all of us. He said travailing in Zion. It takes everybody to travail. It takes every person in the body of Christ to do something. God set travail upon the body of Christ. God set us into the kingdom of God for one purpose and that's to get souls saved. We need to cry out to God and find out what's, what's so important about the soul that there is such a battle. Why should we be travailing? Because God said, I'm coming in like manner before, looking for a church that's Amen. without spot and without wrinkle and if I can find such a thing, the name will not be blot out of the books. Yes. Amen. Come on. Where will you be? I hope, I pray. That when I when the Lord comes, that I'm doing one of two things. I'm either preaching or praying. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather pray because somebody needs saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather pray. It ain't about the he said he said the preaching of the it's the foolish thing. But it's the prayer that knocks down the wall. It's the prayer that does something. It's the praying. It's the travailing. It's the giving birth to that thing. And when that thing gets birthed out, that thing has to grow up. We have to nurture it, feed it. People are getting saved by the thousands, putting notches in their belts and notches in their guns. I got 1,500 saved today. Praise God. What you do with them after you got done? Man, come on. What'd you do with them? Did you send them to church? Did you send them in? Did you did you raise them up? Did you did you give them the word of God, or did you just say, "I got that one. Let's move on to the next multitude." Come on. Come Where's on. the body of Christ? It ain't. It, well, it's all about saving souls. Yes, it is. But what you gonna do with them? Are you gonna give them some authority? Are you gonna show them into the kingdom of God? Are you gonna show them what Jesus is all about? Are you gonna begin to grow that thing? Give that thing some nurturing and some admonition of the Lord. Raise up a child. And to train him up in the way that he should go and he'll never depart from it for Whoa. God Amen. is the answer and he'll never ever leave you never forsake you Come on. Yeah. Yeah. it's the kingdom of God where are we today let me tell you something if the word of God doesn't prick holes in your heart you got a heart of stone All right. you need to be saved Amen Turn with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 12. Chapter 12, verses 18 through 24 says, For ye are not come unto the mount, unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness, darkness, and tempest. And the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words with voice that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more. For they could not endure that which was commanded, and if so, much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned and thrust through with the dark. But ye are come unto Mount Zion. Yeah. yeah. Ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn. 
Yeah. He paid the price so that you don't have to go to the mountain anymore. Yeah, he paid the price so that you don't have to go to the temple anymore. He paid the price so that all we got to do is just say, God, forgive me of all of my sins. Hallelujah. God, forgive me. But he who is not holy touches the mount dies. <laughs> you don't have your heart right with God. You suffer a death. Oh, man. <clears throat> he said, for the wages of sin is death. Yes, sir. Amen. <clears throat> Galatians 4 and 19. Galatians 4 and 19. Let's start with verse number 18. It says, but it is good to be zealous, affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you, my little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Understand what Paul was talking about. He said, I travail again. I travail again. You were saved, but yet something happened. You think you're still saved, but there's something going on. You're not quite right yet. You're not quite grown up in the stature and the fullness of Christ. In other words, I'm travailing again for you. God has put a burden upon me so that you can grow up in the fullness of Christ. I'm calling out to you, you Galatians. Grow up in the kingdom of God. Grow up and lay aside every weight and sin that so easily beset you. Throw these things away. He said, come out, ye from among them. Be to be, don't be doers of the, of the world. Be a doer of the word. Hear the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Be a doer of the word. Walk in the word. Live in the word. And if you, if you live in the word, you won't have anything to worry about. Mm -hmm. You foolish you. Galatians. Hallelujah. I see you. He said, my little children for whom I labor in birth again. I labor again. You were born unto Christ once and I, and I labor again unto you. I, give, I, I labor because your birthright wasn't right. Amen. Come on. Your birthing wasn't right. You came out retarded. Yeah. You came out something was wrong <clears throat> along the way. Somebody didn't, somebody didn't give you something. But the young man that was laying on the side of the road, Philip come along and he says, he says, what are you doing? He says, I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. He says, I can't figure it out unless somebody teach me. Mm -hmm. And what did Philip do? He taught him everything. He turned to the Scripture and Isaiah said, He hath borne our sickness, carried our sorrows. And then he baptized him and was gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He got him saved and taught him something. The whole body of Christ needs to learn by example. And an example means uh, be holy before the Lord as I am holy. As the Lord God is holy. If you're not holy, He said a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is not talking about people, but if you've got little, little leaven right here, it, leaven, it, it spoils the whole barrel. Yeah. But travailing to get rid of that thing. Travailing in the kingdom of God. Paul said, he said, I travail again. I travailed once for you, but now i got to travail again for you. Because it's in my heart that you do right. He said, Paul rightly considers himself to be the father to the Galatians, yet this challenge has made him feel as if he must bring them to Jesus all over again. The body of Christ needs to be brought to Christ all over again. Repent. We need to repent and do your first works over again. Go back. God, forgive me of all of my sins. What happened? What happened? In other words, somebody out there is travailing for you to live right, for you to do right. And it's Paul. He said, I, Galatians, I, I see what you're doing. I see what's going on. I, I travail in the Spirit that Christ may be formed in you in the right time and the right place and in the right heart. <coughs> he said, for whom I labor and birth again until Christ is formed in you. So in other words, Christ never was there. But we cast out devils in His name. And they left. 
but you did not have him. The idea of Christ is formed in you is similar to Romans 8 and 20, 29 says, For he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son. The image of a Son to the image of Christ. If, if Christ dwells in you, you should be able to look like Christ. Mm -hmm. You should be able to, uh, if you want to, if you're in the ministry and being abiding in the ministry, you should walk as Christ walked. And that is, He walked in the fivefold ministry. He walked in that. You can too. If He can do it, you can do it. He said, I'm the example for you to walk. I'm the example. But travailing wow. in the kingdom of God, not enough of it. There's not enough travailing. There's not enough in the body of Christ that has any compassion on the body of Christ. We've got compassion, but it's all about me, my four, and no more. Uh, don't touch my house. It's mine. I have compassion on my children, but what about the children that are out there that have nothing? Are you travailing for them? Are you, are you crying out to them? They, they, they know Jesus. Everybody's saved. Everybody's going to heaven. But I got real good news for you. Not everybody's staying. We're all going to make it. I've talked to thousands of people out on the streets. And said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go to heaven. I'm ready. I'm, I'm, if Jesus comes, I'm going. I'm going. Are you staying? I hope so. I hope so. Let's get it right. Because He put the burden on you. Amen. And that burden requires some birth pains. <clears throat> and it's time for the body of Christ to start getting some birth pains in the kingdom of God. If we're not getting birth pains in the kingdom of God, if we're not crying out to God every day, we're not down on bended knees, God save Billy, God save Bobby, God save them, God get into, into their life, get into their business, get all up into everything they got, God. Travailing in the Spirit, God save them, Lord. God do what it takes, God. I don't care. I'm going to travail until the kingdom of God comes forth, until we all come into the unity of the Faith. Yeah. Amen. It ought to prick your heart and it ought to prick it hard. Where are we? Where do we stand as the body of Christ? We say we're saved, but are we really? Is Christ formed in you the image of the Son? Our hearts cry ought to be out for God send some travail upon me. Send some travail upon me. There's a woman that travails. You see things a lot. God deals with you a lot. You don't always say everything that you see. He said, you've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you a ruler over me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> he said, because I trust you. And that thing that you've been wanting so bad, whatever it be, he said, I've already did it. Amen. Our heart. God pulled out His heart of stone to give you a heart of flesh. You have every bit of right to stand in the, in the lane of compassion for the body of Christ. Not only for the body of Christ, but for those that are out there saved that can be called the prodigal son. Bring them home and put garments on them. Amen. Come on. Bring them home and put jewels on them. They have every right to be in here just as you do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. <coughs> it shouldn't matter to you. Can, the prodigal son, when he came home, can you imagine the smell that he stunk? Come on. 
Can you imagine what it was like? But you know what? They didn't think about that. Not one bit. They said, I love you anyways. Mm -hmm. Just give him some change of clothes. Give them out there a change of clothes. Mm -hmm. Put Christ in them. Amen. It's your duty. It's your duty. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I want you to think, I'll give you just about a couple minutes. I want you to think about it. Where's my heart? Am I praying enough? Am I seeking the face of God? He said, if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face. Seeking the face of God for someone else. Mm -hmm. Put the self-centeredness down and start getting God-centered. It's about Him. You're here tonight, here this morning, and you think that you haven't had quite things, everything right. I want you to stand. God's given you this opportunity to start things fresh. If you think you're fine, that's great. Then the message was a mess. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you the praise and all the glory and all the honor, God. I ask you to forgive me, Father, if I've missed it in any way. I ask you to forgive me, Father, if I've not travailed and not prayed enough, Father. Give me the birth pains, Father, that someone else might be saved in the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 <coughs> I had it at six o'clock.